Welcome back to the wonderful world of astronomy. This is chapter five, Light and Matter. In the first two videos of chapter five, we've been looking mostly at light, and now we're gonna get more into focusing on matter. So this is part four on atoms. So what is the structure of matter? Matter is made up of very tiny particles called atoms. And as you can see here, it says 10 million atoms roughly could fit end to end across this dot. So they're very, very tiny. Now, if we zoom in on this, pretending, uh, okay, so 10 million atoms across this dot, we zoom in and we're gonna look at an atom. And an atom is composed of a nucleus at the center. It says the nucleus is nearly 100,000 times smaller than the atom, but contains nearly all of its mass. So if this big cloud right here is the atom, one 100,000th of its size is the nucleus right there containing most of the mass. And when we're in the classroom at the college, the scale I use is imagine that the an atom is the entire size of our classroom. The nucleus would be a grain of sand sitting in the center of the classroom, and all the rest is empty space. Now, there's the nucleus, and let's go over here, zooming in. The nucleus is composed of two types of particles. They are protons, and the illustrator uses red spheres for that, and neutrons using gray spheres right there. They don't actually have color as such, but that's what the illustrator here has done. So these two charges, protons and neutrons. Later, we're gonna talk about the electrical charges of atoms, the electrical charge of different particles. And for now, you should know that a proton has a positive charge and a neutron is neutral, so it has zero charge. And then spread out, it says smeared out around the edge of the atom is the electrons and the electrons have negative charge. So we've got the nucleus at the center with the protons and neutrons, and then the electrons that are whizzing around very fast. And in this animation, you see the small dense nucleus that contains protons and neutrons, and the electrons surround the nucleus. So three particles that are in an atom, three types of particles rather. Now, when we describe an atom, there are two quantities that we use. And the first is the atomic number. And the atomic number is the number of protons in the atom. That's what's going to define what element it is. So, for example, hydrogen is known as element number one. And it's known as element number one because it has one proton. So its atomic number is one because it has one proton. Now, the other quantity we use to describe an atom is its atomic mass number, and that is the total mass of the nucleus. It's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So, for example, here we have a, the most basic atom. It's hydrogen. It's just simply got one proton in there, zero neutrons. So it's got an atomic number of one, and it's got an atomic mass number of one. Now also, it has electrons. In this case, it has one electron, but we don't count that when we're talking about the atomic mass number or the atomic number. Um, it doesn't count towards the mass because electrons, while they do have some mass, it's so small, we usually don't even count it. Now you can see this notation right here, the name hydrogen is spelled out, but we can also write it as its symbol H. And that one that's to the upper left hand means it's its atomic mass number. So that's known as hydrogen one. Let's look at another example. This is helium four. Now helium is known as element number two because that's its atomic number two because it has two protons. Now you can see the picture here, the two red spheres represent the protons, the two gray spheres represent the neutrons. So helium, by definition, always has atomic number two because of its two protons. The number of neutrons can vary. In this particular case, it has two neutrons, as you can see in the picture. So two protons plus two neutrons gives an atomic mass number of four. And so the notation we use, we can call it helium four. By the way, it also has two electrons 
uh, usually, not always, but usually the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, and I'll talk about that later. Let's look at another example. Carbon, by definition, carbon is any atom that has six protons in it. So carbon's atomic number is six. In this case, uh, it's got six neutrons as well. It doesn't have to have six neutrons. Carbon always has six protons and it can have a varying number of neutrons. But in this case, it has six neutrons. So six plus six gives an atomic mass number of 12. And it also has six electrons matching the number of protons. So I want you to remember that the atomic mass number, it's basically the mass of the atom, is the number of protons plus the neutrons. We don't count electrons because an electron is actually about uh, 1 1840th the mass of a proton. So it's very, very tiny, very low mass. So we essentially don't count its mass. We just count the protons and neutrons to get the mass number. The atomic number is simply the number of protons. So let's look at this. Let's quiz ourselves here. How many protons and how many neutrons are in this atom? So this is lithium. Its symbol is Li. And now I'm adding something new here. I haven't shown you this before. If there's a number in the lower left hand of the symbol, that is the atomic number. Now, oftentimes we don't have to write that. It's uh, a bit redundant because the chemical symbol lithium, and if you have a periodic table, uh, you can see that lithium is element number three. So if it's lithium with the symbol Li, there will always be a three here, or there should always be a three that belongs there. So sometimes we write it, sometimes we don't. But so that atomic number being three, that means it has three protons. And then you look at the five and we wanna know how many neutrons. Well, remember it's the protons plus the neutrons that gives the atomic mass number. So we're gonna take this five, subtract the three, and that tells us that there are two neutrons. So three protons plus two neutrons gives us the total of five. And there's a picture of it there, lithium five. Let's do another example. Now, by the way, you see that four down there and to the left, it's written in red. It doesn't always have to be written in red. That's just the way um, the graphic that I found has it written. We're looking at the element beryllium. And the question is, how many protons and how many neutrons? So we're going to look at the lower left hand. That's the atomic number, and it's four. So that tells us how many protons there are, so four protons. So if the atomic mass number is nine, how many neutrons does that leave us with? And you should get five neutrons because... 4 plus the 5 is going to give 9. So we're looking at what's an isotope called beryllium 9. Here's a periodic table of the elements, and they start with element number 1, which is hydrogen, element number 2, which is helium, and then we go back to the left, element 3 is lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine neon, and I know it's too small to see on the screen and the resolution isn't that good, but um, each of these in the upper left hand is a number, so number one, number two, number three, number four, and that is the atomic number. So every element is defined by its atomic number. Hydrogen is always one, helium is always two, lithium is always three, etc. What can change is the mass. And that has to do with how many neutrons you add or take away from it. You can see how many elements there are um, on this table. They go up down here to the lower right, 118 elements. In this class, we will mostly be focusing on the uh, maybe the first 20 elements or so. Um, so there are many elements we're not going to talk about, or maybe I'll occasionally mention them throughout class as it's necessary, but the, the top 20 are the ones we'll be focusing on. You don't have to memorize them, except you should know hydrogen number one and helium number two, because those are the most dominant 
elements in the universe. So most common elements in the universe, hydrogen number one, helium number two. Now you can think of those numbers there as the rankings, meaning hydrogen is the number one most common. Hydro or helium is the number two most common, but also those are their atomic numbers. Hydrogen is element number one, helium is element number two. Astronomers sometimes refer to all other elements as heavy elements or metals. Astronomers sometimes refer to all other elements as heavy elements or metals. And non-astronomers think this is crazy. Uh, it is a little weird because if you take a chemistry class or just in everyday life, you think of metals as uh, that's a term that's reserved for certain elements like gold and copper and iron and nickel and that have certain properties. But in astronomical literature, often every element that is lithium or higher, so number three or higher, sometimes they're referred to as metals. The next term I want to teach you is an isotope. Now, two isotopes of an element, they have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. So they're in the same family, they're in the same element, but they will have different masses. For example, you can see in the picture three different isotopes of carbon. Carbon has more isotopes, but here are three that are shown. So they're called carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Carbon, by definition, has six protons. It's element number six, that's its atomic number. But there can be different numbers of neutrons. So on the left, you have six protons plus six neutrons, that makes a mass of 12, and it's called carbon 12. Notice the different ways that it can be written, carbon with the word written out and then a hyphen then 12, or the element symbol C with a 12 to the upper left hand. And if you're writing it out like that with the symbol notation, don't just put the 12 in any random place. It specifically goes in the upper left hand because the other places, like the lower left hand, the upper right hand, etc., they're reserved for other things. You've already seen how the lower left hand can have the atomic number. So there could be, right where my marker is, there could be a six right there. The other isotope is carbon-13. So this means six protons plus seven neutrons. And then a heavier isotope of carbon is carbon-14. So six protons plus eight neutrons. The most basic isotopes are hydrogen isotopes, hydrogen being the most basic element. So we have hydrogen one, hydrogen two, and hydrogen three. So hydrogen one, it has a nickname. It's sometimes referred to as proteum, and it's just got one proton. So you think one proton, plus zero neutrons gives it that mass of one. But if we add a neutron, now we have a mass of two. So it's called hydrogen two, and its nickname is deuterium. And then if we add one more neutron, we have hydrogen three, its nickname is tritium. So all of these are isotopes of hydrogen. Let's now talk about how many electrons are in an atom. So we've been talking about the nucleus with how many protons and neutrons, but then remember, there are the electrons that are way beyond the nucleus that are swarming around, going very, very fast. Uh, we sometimes say they are smeared out around the nucleus at a relatively large distance. Now, every particle has an electrical charge. Each proton has an electrical charge of positive one. Each electron has an electrical charge of negative one, so they are equal and opposite to each other. If you put a proton and electron next to each other, they will actually balance each other out, and you can just add the numbers. The plus one plus the negative one will cancel out, and it gives a charge of zero. Usually, atoms are electrically neutral. Neutral means having zero charge. And what this means in terms of the particles is that usually uh, there are equal numbers of protons and electrons. Not always, but nature prefers there to be equal numbers of protons and electrons. Now, for example, carbon has six protons always by definition. So if it's neutral, it also has six electrons. And you can do the math. Every proton is a plus one. So plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. 
And then if it has six electrons, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, and it all comes out to be zero charge, making it neutral. When we talk about electric charge, by the way, neutrons don't come into the conversation because neutrons are neutral. They have zero charge. A minute ago, I said that atoms usually have equal numbers of protons and electrons, but it is possible to take away an electron or even to add electrons. For purposes of this class, we'll mostly be dealing with taking away of electrons. If an electron is taken away, the atom becomes an ion, and we say that it's been ionized. So if you insert enough energy or the right amount of energy into the atom, it can uh, just strip the electron away. And remember back to the previous video, it was uh, chapter five, part two, where I talked about ionizing radiation. And remember that is gamma, X-ray, and ultraviolet. Those are electromagnetic waves that have enough energy to strip the electron away. So think about the carbon atom that when it's neutral has six electrons to match the six protons. But if you take one away, now you only have five electrons. So carbon that has been singly ionized, that means one ionization has taken place, one electron's been taken away, it now has five electrons, and it has a charge of plus one, because the six pluses of the protons and the five negatives of the electrons add up to positive one. So this is what the upper right hand of the chemical symbol is used for. Sometimes it'll be written as a plus sign, sometimes it'll be written as a plus one, or one plus but that means it's been singly ionized, it has a charge of plus one. Now, if we take away another electron, then it's been doubly ionized. So a carbon atom that's been doubly ionized has had two electrons taken away, so it only has four electrons now. It can be written like this, either C++ or C2+, and that means it has a charge of positive two. So if you see the symbol C2+, plus or C++, plus plus, you think it has a charge of plus two, meaning from its neutral state, it had two electrons pulled away from it. So if you want to know how many electrons are in there, you have to think, what was it in its neutral state? Well, if it's carbon with six protons, it originally had six electrons. And if two have been taken away, now it only has four. Let's look at this chemical symbol here. So I've shown you the upper left hand, lower left hand, and upper right hand. Remember that, let's start down here at the lower left hand. This number, which doesn't always have to be there, is the atomic number. So that's uh, for magnesium, which is what we're looking at here, that's 12. The mass number is the protons plus neutrons. In this case, we're thinking about an atom that has 12 protons and 12 neutrons, so a total of 24. Over on the right-hand side, upper right, is the charge. Now, in this case, we're looking at something that has had two ionizations, so it has a charge of plus two. And so what's leading to that charge of plus two is the 12 protons, and then it's got 10 electrons. So uh, the 12 positives plus the 10 negatives gives us a charge of plus two. And of course, the chemical symbol, each element has a symbol that's either one or two letters. In this case, magnesium is Mg. So let's think through some of these. A neutral carbon-14 atom has how many protons, how many neutrons, and how many electrons? So when approaching this question, think about the atom the element itself, and how many protons it has. So usually it's best to think of protons first. If it's carbon, and you can look it up on a periodic table, there's one in the back of the book, you can uh, Google search, find a periodic table, but carbon is element number six. As you go through the periodic table from left to right, zigging back and forth, you have hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium is four, boron is five, and carbon is six. And that tells us how many protons there are. So there are six protons because it's carbon. Now let's think about the number of neutrons. And that mass number 14 is going to give us the clue. So if there are six protons 
and there are a total of 14 particles in the nucleus, you do the subtraction and think how many neutrons there are. Well, 14 minus 6 gives 8 neutrons. And then you can see the 6 protons plus the 8 neutrons, they should add up to give that mass number 14. Now, the last question, how many electrons does it have? And the key word is right here, that it's neutral. If it's neutral, electrically neutral, that means that there's as many protons as there are electrons. And as I said before, this is the normal state that atoms tend to occur in nature. So having six protons and being neutral, it has six electrons. Let's do another one. Neutral helium-3 has how many protons, neutrons, and electrons? And the first thing you should do is think about how many protons. So if it's helium, and this is one, there's only two elements I told you you need to memorize. Uh, the others you can look up on a periodic table as needed. But helium, I want you to remember, is element number two. That's its atomic number. That's the number of protons. And so, how many neutrons does it have? If we're talking about helium-3, helium with a mass of three, how many neutrons does it have? One neutron, because it's the two protons plus the one neutron that make up that mass of three. And finally, how many electrons? And you should go back to the description that talks about, is it neutral, is it ionized, how much is it ionized? In this case, it's neutral which means it has equal numbers of protons as electrons. So two electrons. So there's a model of it right there, two protons, one neutron in the middle, and then the two electrons. Let's do this one. A certain atom has three protons, four neutrons, and two electrons identify it. And so when I say identify it, that means what element is it? What's its mass? So we can identify the isotope. And let's talk about its charge as well. So we're going to focus on that number of protons again to tell us what element it is. And element number three is lithium. And now let's think about what isotope of lithium it is. So what is its mass? Three protons plus four neutrons gives an atomic mass number of seven. So we're dealing with the isotope of lithium seven. And finally, we need to think about its charge. Lithium has three protons. This particular atom that we're considering only has two electrons. So you should think if it were neutral, it would have three electrons matching the number of protons, but it doesn't. It only has two electrons. That tells us that one electron has been stripped away. So we can say that it's singly ionized. We can also say it has a charge of plus one. So the answer is we have singly ionized lithium seven. And there's the symbol. We've got on the lower left hand, we have the atomic number three. On the upper left hand, we have the atomic mass number seven. And on the upper right hand, we have the charge of positive one. So when it comes quiz time and test time, you should be able to do these types of questions that uh, you've been seeing in this video. Okay, here's a symbol. How many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons? And so it is boron, and we go to the lower left hand to find the atomic number that boron always has, five, and that tells us how many protons there are. Now we want to know how many neutrons. So we go to the upper left hand, and we see it has a mass of eight, and that's the total number of protons and neutrons. Well, out of that eight, we already have five protons, so eight minus five gives us three neutrons. And finally, how many electrons? You see that charge of plus three. And you can think that means that three electrons have been stripped away from its neutral state. But what was its neutral state? Well, if it's neutral, it has five protons, but three have been taken away. So 
it has two electrons. So five protons means neutrally it had five electrons, but three have been taken away, so two electrons. And we identify this as triply ionized boron-8. There's a picture of it right there. And that is the end of part four of chapter five. Have a great day.